Um, I'm glad someone mentioned um, about the data sets, the historical uh, data sets, uh, because that's pretty much what I'm interested in. Uh, my talk today is probably about two things. Uh, and the first thing would be the, um, the sheer amount of rich data in Link Tasmania. And the second thing is um, how to, uh, how best to, or how to best capture that, that data, um, how to organise it, how to structure it, um, how to link it, how to embed it, and um, how to display it. Now, uh, display it in um, a vehicle like um, a timeline or uh, interactive maps, that, those, those sorts of things. Um, on the question on rich data, uh, Link Tasmania um, has well, millions of uh, records. Um, it would be good to think of these records as um, containers, uh, which really have, have bits of useful information in them. Um, and one such container is uh, one that I've been working with, was Miss Wayne's um, newspaper index, we see up there on the screen. Um, that covers, uh, she, she covered a whole range of subjects, including bush rangers. And um, she started off with the Michael Howe gang, which um, a gang of desperados from 1815 to 1818, they ran up and down the state. So I decided to have a little, little project around that and chose 22 events uh, from, from that particular resource. So, what does Miss Wayne's um, container look like? So let's have a little look at that. Uh, she was around in the 1920s to, to 40s, um, doing lots of compiling of indexes. So there's a physical uh, part of the container, and you'll see things like attack on D. Stanfield's house, and attack on Steins and Troy's, and D. Rose's house at. Um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, here's another little page towards the end of the bit on the bush rangers, the, the Michael Howe one. Um, and one of them is um, the very last chapter in that, and that was when uh, Private Hugh, I think you can see it there, shot Howe on the Shannon River. So, What I did was to, from this index, I plucked 22 events, and um, they are listed there. So um, you'll notice there are the Q numbers in, in blue. They are links to Wikidata items. Wikidata is a sister project of Wikipedia. So instead of articles, this is more like the data side of wikis. And if you think of the Wikidata items as containing statements, uh, which are really fields that state or express links to things. So I think the best way to sort of try and demonstrate that is to um, take that first one, where, you know, gang burns magistrates corn stacks at pit water. That's my invention. So I've done one for each of those 22. By the way, they also burned down the police chief's stacks out of pit water as well. So they really started off their career with a bang. So um, this table represents the statements that you will find in all 22 Wikidata items. So you'll see there the columns represent those that uh, the the different elements. Uh, so you'll see like, for instance, event type, different types of events. So they're obviously into robbery, arson, um, uh, from the um, soldiers' point of view, hot pursuit. Um, they, they were captured at various times. They, were, they murdered people, and so on and so forth. So that's one of the, the data elements, one of the statements. Think of it, look at the other ones, the other statements. Um, there were statements around the location where these events happened. So we've got, you know, Pitwater, Greenpoint, um, Hobart, Jericho, all these fabulous names. Uh, the date, the next column is the date of those events. 
And most importantly, or very importantly, is the coordinates, the location and the coordinates, which, uh, as we'll see in a minute, will be quite useful for a geographic visualisation. So we can actually create a map out of that. Um, going further on, you can have any number of data elements. So the, the second last column is the, where it says reference is about the trove articles that relate to these events. So we can, we can have access to that and then URLs and so on and so forth. So we can have lots and lots of data elements. So um, by running a Sparkle query, we can convert this organized and structured uh, wiki data into a timeline. So this, do you pun? Yes. Sparkle is a type of language that joins things together so that they can produce a result. So, yeah. I have, I need to go live now. And here's the live timeline that after we've combined all these terms, and you'll see there on the bottom it's um, another sister project of Wikipedia is Histropedia. And I've been working with uh, staff at Histropedia, they're in based in London. And um, so the, the bottom axis is 1815 to 1818. Um, I've added an image uh, to a couple of them. And so uh, one of the other things that I've been able to do is to uh, link these to <coughs> Trove articles. So for instance, um, if I click on that, it takes me to the Trove article about that. Um, this really is only a halfway house really. Um, it's, it's kind of useful. Oh, by the way, you can, you can do a few things like manipulate the position of things on there. So if I click on those, I can move them around, move them around like that. I can expand the timeline like that so you can have it looking a bit prettier and move things around. Um, we could, um, Histropedia has offered to use this as a showcase, what we've just done, um, and um, I've got a demo of how it could look. You've got to use your imagination a bit here. And think of um, all these events that we've got here and superimpose them on the, on the demo. So let's have a look at the demo. So, over here is the, their uh, Renaissance art thing. But I, what they have here on the slide is a filter. So instead of clicking on these, these items here, you can select one. And so if you want to look at a Wikipedia article on that, you simply click. So you click on the different events. Imagine doing this with, the, with, my, with my timeline. Uh, down here, you could click on, they've got YouTube. But for instance, we could have the Trove articles down there. Or we might have a, um, another filter here for, um, uh, let's say, an album of photographs about the location. So we could have historic photographs around Pitwater or uh, Jericho or some of these, these things, so that we can create a, a package or an approach to um, being able to use the timeline in this sort of comprehensive way. I, just to finish up, I have a bit of a question, which is from on the slide. So what's next? Um, what I've identified is one rich data set from Ms. Wayne. There are actually, even with the cursory look, there are actually hundreds that I've found already without, without even trying. So I, I think the next step would be to do a bit of a project around trying to find what are the best data sets that, that we can start to use to start creating these sorts of packages. Uh, here's a, an example of some of them, uh, that we, some of the areas that we might start looking. And um, 
with a view to um, finding ways to use that, and it's not just um, using it for timelines, but um, we could have interactive tables and info boxes, much as what you see on Wikipedia, you'll see the info boxes on, on Wikipedia, sometimes Google actually picks up the info boxes as well. So that's where we're going to next, thank you. Next.